Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today I'm going to be doing an update for the first weekend of ProQuest. Um, I had a great time at my ProQuest this weekend. I went to one on Sunday, which is uh, yesterday night. And uh, there's a lot of people that went to ProQuest around the world. Uh, and I think everyone had a pretty great time. It seems to be a pretty positive reaction, um, especially to this meta right now. Uh, I mean, there's like some complaining about Starvo, but from what... I can tell. It looks like we might have overreacted a little, at least. Um, a lot of people found ways to combat it, and so I'm kind of going to be giving an updated like tier list, and I'm going to do this every week on like Monday or Tuesday after the pro quest. And we have four weeks of pro quest, so kind of for a month I'll be doing like weekly tier list updates. Um, I'm not going to call these like official tier list videos, like I usually do like a monthly tier list video because these are kind of rapidly evolving. I mean, I'm going to a ProQuest every weekend, and I'm kind of seeing what's going on, how people are adapting. I promise next weekend's ProQuests are going to be different than this weekend's, just because of the adaptations that people are already making. Um, but we're just going to hop into it. So people knew there was going to be a lot of Starvo. Um, there was a lot of Starvo. But people found ways to beat that deck before, you know, the first weekend of ProQuest. And the most popular one I saw was a chain. So basically full aggro chain, not trying to do any kind of big combo stuff. I don't even know if they're running like Eclipse a lot of them. Or, um, not trying to get like huge blood debt, just going pretty aggressive and really trying to use the power of carry on Husk to block a huge attack from Starvo. Um, which kind of just throws the tempo tempo like way off, right? If if Star was coming in with a big dominated attack and you just throw, you know, carry on a husk, uh, grasp of the Arknight, Arknight skull cap in front of it, you can block for ten, right? Without using a single card, you can block for ten. Even if it's in a an Oaken old fuse for eleven, you can throw your spellbound creepers in front of it, and now you've blocked for eleven without using a single card, right? So that's pretty incredible. Um, on one of their big turns, you basically just throw all your equipment in front of them and then just win the race. They don't like blocking. The deck doesn't block phenomenally. It blocks just okay. Um, Starvo, I mean. And so Chain's able to really take advantage of that. The pro quest I went to here in Florida was won by none other than U.S. national champion Tariq Patel, who was on a chain list. So uh, shout out to um, Tarek um, for winning our pro quest here, uh, you know. Everyone, I guess, expected it in a way. I mean, he's the U.S. national champion, won U.S. Um, U won US Nats uh, less than a few months ago, and he's from my local scene. We have a really competitive scene here. Um, there's also Chris Ray there, who got uh, second, and he was on Viscerai, um, who Chris Ray is the owner of the team I'm on, an amazing top player in the NA. There's also like Rob Siegel, a lot of top talent, right? So um, I love how competitive my locals are. And uh, actually, on that note, Viscerai seems to still be really great. Um, I think I ranked him in the top five decks to, to watch out for. I think I put him number one. Um, I didn't have Chain on that list, and I did not know how good this aggro Chain was and how good a Carrion Husk would be encountering Starvo, right? So um, Chain was not in my top five in that last video I even put out. Definitely is in the top five now, um, and so is Viscerai still. Viscerai is still definitely in the top five has pretty solid game into uh, into Starvo going that kind of semi-OTK. It seems like semi-OTK is kind of just the game plan now for Viscerai in general. I had a, I did poorly. I had some, you know, not I went 3-3. It wasn't the best results. Um, but I played a game against Viscerai, and I drew so terribly. It was so funny. I, I had three turns in a row where I couldn't... I was basically playing like a sealed deck as Starvo, and I had three games in a row, or three three turns in a row, where I couldn't attack him for anything more than just Winter's Whale, even with all four cards, because he was just building up rune chance. So he was at like twenty two rune chance, and still at twenty one life, because I just wasn't putting any pressure on him. I was just drawing terribly, and then he OTK'd me like for the full forty, right? So this right, I mean, that was an ex maybe a little bit of an exception, because I was just not dealing. I was basically just swinging for four, for three turns, and then he just could build up so much, so many rune chance. Um, but still, in general, it's a, it's a pretty solid matchup for Viscerai. Uh, I think Briar, if we're just going to round out the Rune Blades, I think Briar's in probably A tier, maybe B tier. Not as much game into Starvo. 
can't defend as well. Um, doesn't have carry on husk, doesn't have these good reduce to ring chance. I mean, technically does, but doesn't work with them as well. Can't do this OTK strat. So not quite as good as the other two in blades right now. Um, but yeah, still pretty strong. I think all three of the rune blades are solid picks, but especially chain and viscerai. Um, you know, this chain and viscerai were the top two for, in finals for my pro quest, pro quest with U.S. national champion Tarek Patel, Tariq Patel on chain, and then Chris Ray, my team um, team owner on viscerai, who's an amazing player as well. Both great. Um, I don't think this tier list has a Starvo actually, so Shiana will be our Starvo. Um, I think Starvo's probably S tier still, actually. Um, I just think it does have stuff that beats it. Uh, so I'm going to kind of, I feel like we've talked so much about Starvo. This tier list and talking today is kind of about what has adapted to Starvo, what's been beating it, right? Um, because my field probably was half Starvo, we had 40 players, maybe 42 players, I think. Um, and it was probably like 15 Starvo, not like half, but probably like 30% Starvo, 35, 40% in that range, right? Um, a lot of Starvo. So you do, it's going to stick around, right? The deck's still really strong. Um, it's adapting. Uh, there's like Starvo control, stuff like that, that you can see uh, on Fab TCG. There's a, um, Kale McCreeth is playing a Starvo control list, and that's going to be harder for, you know, like the Iro chain to beat. So it's adapting, of course. I think it'll stay in S tier. Um, but, you know, it is it is beatable. It's for sure beatable. Um, for example, Lexi, right? Lexi, um, I'm going to put an S tier right now. Uh, I've seen a lot of Lexi. I watched quite a few ProQuests. Um, one of my teammates got top eight as well at the ProQuest on Lexi. Um, Ice Lexi just does a really good job of disrupting um, this Starvo. Starvo really needs to have like exact numbers for pitches, uh, exact, you know, blue ice pitch for Winter's Whale. It just needs these exact numbers, right? And Lexi just ruins that with just her hero ability, flipping a Frostbite. Um, she can be really disruptive. She's discard effects. So she's in a great spot. I think Rain Razors is one of the strongest, if not the strongest instant ever printed. Um, for the cost of zero, and being a yellow, it can give up to like plus six and usually plus four for zero, right? So, you know, you play two arrows, it's already a plus four spread across two cards, which is even better than arguably better than on one. If you do three arrows, which isn't that hard if you had one in Arsenal already and you uh, turn it face up and then you full tear two arrows in and then use the last arrow, um, that's, you know, plus six for zero, right? That's There's nothing else in the game. I mean, even Red Lightning Press is only plus three for zero, and it has a restriction. Um, this one is just arrows, which is all your attacks, and it gives plus two to them all. So very good. Rain Razors is very strong. Lexi's definitely got a big buff from that. Her damage output was increased pretty well. Um, and in general, she's just in a really solid spot, even into maybe not into Viserai as much. Um, Viserai has probably a pretty solid um, matchup into Lexi, but especially Chain might have a good Chain matchup, definitely has a good Briar matchup still. So Lexi in a great spot. I didn't have her in my top five either. Um, and yeah, should have respected that power of ice, Lexi. Um, she's doing great. Prism, um, still in the top five, I think. Uh, Prism right here is going to be the counter to a lot of these decks. Um, she's arguably Viscerai's worst matchup. She's arguably Lexi's worst matchup. Um, she's kind of iffy on Chain and Briar, but she can, you know, make it work, and she has a decent Starva matchup too, so Prism's still in a great spot. Um, would definitely still recommend being on Prism, especially if Starvos are moving to more controlling builds. It's even better for, to Prism. Um, I talked to Kale, and he said that Prism is Starvos' worst matchup, question mark, or one of the worst matchups. So, uh, yeah, Prism's in a great spot. Uh, we're going to just move her all the way over here. So, yeah, I think Prism's the best deck right now. Um, I'm actually going to do this because I think Viscerai is still really strong. Uh, and Starvo is going to be right here because I think he can adapt to the chain. Um, so this is probably what my ordering is for S tier right now. Really solid. Um, yeah, I mean, great. I'm, I'm happy to be pleasantly surprised that two of the top decks in the form of Dash and Oldham um, aren't in this anymore. Not that I don't like those, but I like to see it kind of evolve. You know, that already since my last video, I think two of those in you know, the top five is different now, right? These would say, I would say is the S tier. Um, 
and it's pretty solid, right? Uh, I do want to kind of shout out the diversity still of the meta. Um, you know, everyone thought it was going to be all Starvo, and I did say there was a lot of Starvo, but because a lot of people brought counters to Starvo and knew what they were doing at my meta, there were eight different heroes in my top eight. So my top eight was actually one Chain, one Viserai, one Lexi, one Prism, uh, one Rhinar, one Oldham, and one Dorinthia. Um, with a really spicy axe Dorinthia that I actually got the list from him. He made a top four, on, so he made it to our semis um, with this axe Dorinthia, and it's really spicy. I should be posting a video in a few days. Hopefully I'll record a video in a few days for this axe story list. Speaking of, we'll put that in A tier. It's really strong. I think it's great. I think it beats a large portion of the meta. Um, I like what it's doing. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty new. It's pretty fresh, and it's using a lot of new concepts for Dorinthia. So I genuinely can't tell you exactly what the bad matchups are for it, because I don't know. I haven't tested with it not enough. Um, but it does just seem really strong, right? It went, uh, I think he went undefeated in our Swiss six rounds. Either that or he went... No, he went 5-1. He lost to Chris Ray, who did go undefeated on his Viscerai um, in the last round. So he went 5-1, losing in the last round, I believe. But yeah, really strong deck. Seems to be doing a lot of good things. Um, and then Oldham is still really solid. Going to put Oldham in A tier still. I do think Oldham is getting a bit weaker if Starvo is moving to a more controly build and not full aggro. Um, and Prism is really good, which is Oldham's worst matchup as well. So that's why I'm just bumping him down to A tier. I think he's still an amazing deck. I still think if you're an old main to stick on him. Um, but the meta is just evolving in a way that is a little toxic towards Oldham. And before he was just a great deck. I mean, we had two Oldhams that went like 4 2 or like they went like X1 or X2. Um, actually, maybe three Oldhams. I'm not sure. But Oldhams was in a great spot against the aggressive chains and the aggressive. Uh, Starvos, but that is kind of changing as a little as we talked about the meta here. Um, let's see, Dash is the last one I, I didn't bring up. Unfortunately, I think Dash is still A tier. Um, because the, the main thing that keeps Dash in the A tier, there's actually a lot of things against Dash that would make her need to drop down to B tier. I think the only thing holding her up is that she's a fantastic Prism matchup, and I think Prism is best deck right now, or at least top three decks. Um, and so if you have a great matchup into the top deck, you know, you're in a solid spot. The problem is, so like Prism probably beats both of these top decks because of Signal Jammer and just of how her um, high octanes worth and work into Prism. Problem is she probably loses to like both Chain and Starvo. So kind of iffy. She's a really bad Chain matchup, a really bad Starvo matchup. So she's in an interesting spot where she she's kind of polarizing. Like you're either going to run into your best matchups and crush them or run into your worst matchups and get crushed. She's not like, a, you know, Viserai, who I think Viserai doesn't have a bad matchup that's horrible. He just has all solid two okay matchups. Like Viserai is a solid pick if you want to have some agency in every game. Dash, maybe not so much. Um, and then next we're going to move on to what actually had a lot of representation is Katsu. One of my favorite heroes, you know, the first hero I did really well with in events. Um, even bigger than that is a major buff. I was testing him. I brought him to a few of the testing nights with my team. I really like the deck. I just don't think it's exactly positioned um, perfectly right now, mostly because of how Rampart and Crown of Seeds work into Kodachis. It just really turns off your mask of momentum super hard um, and just makes the deck harder to get that kind of chip damage in. Like, Starvo and Oldham can both just, you know, Crown of Seeds, Rampart, and just your Kodachis don't do anything, right? So they're they're kind of too efficient into blocking um, Katsu, and they turn off even bigger than that, which is the main problem, because uh, it's, it's just a dead card then. I did see like four or five Katsus, though, at my pro quest, and uh, he seems to be in a really solid spot. Um, and then I guess I'll say Reinar is B tier too. There, were, there was a Reinar in my top eight. I think he's well positioned into some of the top decks. I mean, I think he has a fine matchup into like quite a few of these. Probably not these three, um, but I think he has a solid Viserai and Prism matchup. Probably has a solid, you know, he has a great Dash matchup, a solid Oldham. So he's in a solid spot. He didn't get as much support from Everfest as he would have liked is the main problem. Um, but I think he's in a solid spot still. And then after that, um, we've got like Old Bravo, um, 
who just is kind of completely outclassed by the new Bravo. We've got Kano, we've got Azalea, and we've got Bolton and Levia, I believe are all the other classic constructed heroes. I'm going to say that I don't think there's any D tier heroes right now. Maybe Kano. Um, I guess I'll organize this like, actually it's probably like this, right? Um, I think all the heroes are probably fine right now. The meta is kind of closer than you would expect. Um, Azalea got some really solid support. Um, you know, Bravo has always been strong. He's just weak compared to all the support the other classes got. Even Wizard got some solid support. So I think the meta is tight right now in terms of power level. Um, at least I don't think there's anything like completely bonkers broken. Like during the peak of Chain or the peak of Briar, I would have put them as the only S tier hero. Um, so obviously that's not what the meta is like right now. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's, it's healthy. I, I like it a lot more. I think you can have agency in your games. You can beat Starvo. Um, and I'm a little less depressed than I was expecting to be. Uh, so I'm excited to see what next weekend brings. I'm probably going to stick to Starvo despite how much I hated what the deck I was on is because I just didn't enjoy going like activate my ability, play this dumb break ground for seven dominate and go again and then winter's value like it just felt really bad it didn't feel like what i wanted to do i felt like i was playing a sealed deck that had a broken hero ability um so i'm excited to try out the control build and if i hate that too which i probably won't because i like playing control a lot more than i like playing aggro but if for some reason i don't like that deck either then i'll probably switch for my third weekend of pro quest but i'm sticking to starro for now I would recommend picking any of these nine heroes to play. I think all of these nine heroes can give you a decent chance. I think these five heroes up here will give you the best chance. Um, and yeah, happy to see how the meta is right now. Leave in the comments how you did at your pro quest. I hope you guys won. Let me know what gold foils you saw. Uh, I think at mine, Chris Ray got a Null Rune Boots, question mark, um, which made me happy as a Guardian player, but yeah. Let me know how your pro quests are going and what you think is the meta right now. What's evolving with it? I'd love to hear in the comments. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.